the invitation. It's a great pleasure to be back. Uh, I will be talking about uh, a joint work with uh, uh, Edmond uh, Kozdinan and Kiazan. And Edmond is uh, the main driving force uh, of the project. Uh, so I will, uh, I will start with the plan of the talk. Uh, so uh, the talk will be about uh, planner convex billiards and uh, an example of, uh, uh, of a uh, simple dynamical system, which was introduced into dynamics by Birgo many years ago. And the main focal point of my talk are going to be caustics. And uh, uh, caustics you could uh, uh, connect with the previous talk of Alfonso are this uh, uh, Lagrangian tori in a certain sense, and I will uh, explain why. But if you don't want to think about Lagrangian tori, uh, this is just a uh, effect uh, of orbits. And I will be interested in the families of periodic orbits. And uh, the simplest uh, family of periodic orbits is uh, a curve of constant widths. And the family of periodic orbits, I will be uh, studying uh, domains for which uh, there is a, a family of periodic orbits of period two for the billiard or a uh, uh, curve of constant widths. And uh, um, uh, the first uh, main result is, a, uh, is an answer to a question of uh, 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 whether it is possible to have a, a domain which has uh, two families of, of periodic orbits or uh, more precise language was it's possible to have a, a billiard table which has family of periodic orbits of period two and a periodic orbits of period three. And it turns out that near the circle, it is not possible. And uh, in a sense, uh, I'll show you why it seems surprising uh, to have this. And uh, I'll show you some uh, heuristic calculation which shows that uh, uh, in a sense, we see that one half plus two thirds is less than one. Uh, and uh, I will try to project it into some regularity uh, uh, question, uh, but uh, to, to make it... Uh, uh, the pointer doesn't work. Ah, okay, so to, uh, to be just tiny little bit more precise, uh, half of the dimension of the space of domains corresponds to domains with a caustic two. Two thirds of the dimension of the whole space is a, uh, uh, is domains with a caustic three. It looks like if you have something of half of a dimension and something of two thirds of a dimension, there should be non-trivial intersection, but it turns out it's not there. And uh, then we looked at the case of uh, caustic three and five and uh, for caustic three and five, we managed to do uh, two rounds of approximation theory, but uh, uh, at the moment, uh, there is a high chance that there are domains which have three caustic and not five caustic near the circle and not uh, ellipses. And uh, I'm not sure I'll have uh, time to talk about the proof, but uh, uh, in the proof, there is a KM scheme involved. Okay, to summarize, first I'll tell you about convex billiards and about uh, uh, families of periodic orbits, which I want to study uh, in uh, connection with talk to, of Alfonso, I will be interested in a uh, uh, tori filled with periodic orbits. And uh, I will be interested in uh, studying when those families of periodic orbits coexist. So after I'll show you what I'm studying, I'll uh, state uh, uh, the results. Okay, so the model I'm studying is a uh, uh, billiard in a convex region. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, you have an orbit which uh, 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 collides elastically and angle of reflection is equal to angle of incidence. And I would like to understand properties of these dynamic systems. Uh, I want to associate this dynamical system to a billiard map and uh, for me, uh, these two pictures will coexist. There is a domain omega. There is a, uh, uh, there is a billiard orbit uh, where the yeah, angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. And at the same time, I will be studying uh, 
uh, a cylinder map uh, where if uh, this, this parameterizes the boundary, then this is a, a parameterization of the boundary. And here there is an angle. So here there will be an angle. So I will associate to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, my uh, 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 domain omega a billiard map, which is a map from a cylinder into itself. And these two pictures will coexist during the talk. So here's a, a beautiful animation or beautiful picture created by Alfonso. So if you look at the billiard, I'll tell you what to focus your attention on. Uh, if you have a billiard uh, in the circle, then uh, uh, the orbits are very easy to calculate. And these are, uh, sorry, um, it shouldn't be, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the billiard orbits are easy to calculate. And uh, I will be, uh, during uh, this talk, I will be focused on periodic orbits. For example, if you look at the violet orbit, then uh, you see this is a, uh, a triangle. Uh, I will, another periodic orbit uh, is uh, uh, this one, and it's uh, period five. If uh, uh, is it pink, pink if period three, then uh, violet is uh, period five, and then uh, the light green, I think it's uh, period eight. So the goal of my talk is to investigate domains which have uh, periodic orbits, families of periodic orbits. And circle is a great example because each of these uh, period three orbits uh, uh, comes with a family because what you could do, you could rotate the family with respect to the origin. And as a result, uh, each uh, 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 one periodic orbit creates a one parameter family of periodic orbits. And in terms of the billiard map, uh, uh, there will be uh, an invariant curve. And uh, if I restrict to this invariant curve, then, uh, 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 then there will be just rotation on the circle. So now let me tell you the, uh, the notion uh, of a caustic, which uh, uh, um, uh, I'm going to use. So if, uh, if I have an orbit which is tangent to some invariant curve, and in this case, it's a concentric circle, then after reflection, it's again tangent, then I call the corresponding uh, curve is a caustic. Uh, and uh, uh, for each caustic, uh, there will be a rotation number. For example, the pink invariant curve has a rotation number one third because after three iterates, I go around. After three collisions, I go around. If I uh, go in the opposite direction, then uh, 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 I, I will go around twice. And uh, for each of these caustic, for each of these invariant curves, there will be a rotation number. And I will be interested in only in those invariant curves or in, only in those caustics for which the rotation number is going to be rational. And I will be interested in the rotation number one half, which is period two orbit, one third, which is period three orbit, and one fifth, which is a period five orbit. Okay, now let me start with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, some definitions. So uh, formally, uh, uh, a caustic is a curve inside of my billiard table, such that if, uh, I'm, uh, uh, if one segment of my orbit is tangent to this curve, then after reflection, it's again tangent. And in the case of the circle, you had a core uh, co-centric uh, caustics. Um, there is a, uh, no, one of possible notions of integrability, uh, and it says that if I take union of all caustics, uh, uh, and uh, 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 if union of all caustics uh, contains an open set, uh, analogously to what uh, 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 Alfonso was talking about, uh, 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 then uh, I am saying that uh, my uh, my domain is integrable, but now kind of one of the main messages of the talk, integrability seems to be a very serious uh, uh, rigidity restriction. And it is believed that the 
uh, the following rigidity statement is true, that if domain is integrable, then it is an ellipse. And one of the messages in this talk is to say that billiards are actually much more rigid. And for example, uh, one, of the, the, one of two main results says that uh, if, if I just want to preserve two families of periodic orbits, then it's already, uh, maybe you could call it a super rigidity. So I will be investigating a much weaker assumption uh, and uh, still uh, come out with a, uh, uh, with a significant uh, uh, rigidity uh, result. So of course there is a, uh, you saw the billiard in the, in, the, in the disc and the billiard in the disc, you had the whole space uh, foliated by caustics. And if you are the circles and the whole space is foliated by caustics and the famous result of Bailey says that the converse is also true that if you, the whole billiard table is foliated by caustics, then it is a disc. Uh, but how you could uh, have a union of curves having a, a non-empty interior and not foliated? It can be C0 foliated, but um, not, uh, not on this table. But uh, we, we, uh, on this table, they cannot intersect, but here we don't know how to prove it. Theoretically, they might, right? So we don't know that on this table, they do not intersect, and it's actually an interesting question. You know that they, they do not intersect here, but they may intersect here. Well, very close to the, uh, to the boundary is, I know they don't intersect because uh, there is a special coordinate system where I, don't, I do know that they don't intersect. <sighs> okay, um, so now um, let me, uh, uh, many of you saw this picture many times. I will just mention one regime here, which is not investigated at all. So what's this picture? This picture is a billiard and an ellipse. And uh, uh, the trajectories which I was showing uh, for the circle, for example, light green are the trajectories which go uh, around uh, the origin and the, the blue orbits, they also go around the origin. There was a considerable investigation of these uh, 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 orbits uh, uh, when they are periodic. Uh, but let me, uh, and there are some results uh, with Alfonso and with De Simoe and Avila about rigidity when you have uh, families of periodic orbits uh, 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 going around. But let me tell you that this regime up and down is not investigated much. So, uh, and there is a work of Trishov which says the situation is quite delicate. So if I go up and down, I'm actually inside of ice of this, uh, 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 of this cylinder. And let me tell you that rigidity, or if I preserve the eye, uh, is quite poorly understood. Uh, uh, so this is more for those who want to know uh, open questions. But uh, back to my caustics, uh, what do I want to investigate? I want to investigate families of periodic orbits. And in this case, there is a family of green periodic orbits. Uh, there is a family of blue periodic orbits. And this is what I want to investigate. But uh, the, uh, uh, the pink uh, orbits uh, uh, is something we do not know how to investigate. There have been uh, activity about 30 years ago of investigating uh, the yellow periodic orbits. Okay, um, for, so now let me start with a, uh, an abstract discussion. So <clears throat> the discussion is that, uh, uh, do we have periodic orbits at all? And this is uh, 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 a good exercise is to show that for all periods, uh, there are at least two periodic orbits. But as I keep saying, uh, in my talk, I will be interested in investigating domains for which there is a one parameter family of periodic orbits. Or in other words, for the billiard map, I will be investigating billiards for which there is a family of periodic orbits. And I will be uh, interested in uh, billiards for which uh, 
there will be uh, 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 sometimes one and sometimes uh, more than one family of periodic orbits. So um, now what is the uh, question for me? Um, uh, for question for me is when I could satisfy this condition. Namely, let me say that uh, a caustic is P rationally integrable. And this is analog what Alfonso was talking about. So uh, uh, a caustic is P rationally integrable if it consists of periodic orbits. So in general, it is not true, but I will be interested in, uh, in, uh, in caustics for which, uh, uh, for which only consist of periodic orbits. Uh, and I will be interested in domains which carry a family of uh, 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 periodic orbits. So uh, the case of a circle is trivial because in the case of a circle, uh, you could explicitly compute angle with which you need to reflect. And uh, 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 what uh, we are interested in, uh, 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 the question becomes really uh, 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 almost empty, but what I'm going to be interested in, I am going to be interested in the, the space of convex domains. Uh, and uh, I definitely want uh, some regularity on the boundary. Suppose I will be interested in uh, the space of uh, uh, domains for which the boundary is CR smooth. And, uh, uh, and in this space, uh, there is a special point, which is a circle. And uh, uh, what I would like to investigate, I would like to investigate what are the domains with which there is a P rational caustic. And as I said, in the case of a circle situation is trivial. You have three rational caustics, which is a pink and corresponds to triangle. You have a, a violet caustic. This is a, a period five, and it is also present. So uh, I will be interested uh, in the domains for which it may happen that you have a three caustic and a five caustic, but this is not a circle. So um, maybe if you could carry one picture in your mind out of the talk, then the picture would be the following. <clears throat> uh, uh, on the top left, you have a family of period two orbits, and they, uh, that's indeed a family. Uh, uh, um, uh, and uh, later, I uh, will describe uh, in the case of domains. I was, will describe domains for which there is a period two orbit. I'm also interested in the space of domains about domains which have family of period three orbits. So you could imagine that I'm rotating this period three orbit, and uh, uh, for each uh, point on the boundary, there will be. A, a period three orbit associated to it. And, uh, 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 and I want to understand uh, which domains can carry this family. You could also think that I, uh, uh, I uh, want to understand the uh, space of domains which have a uh, uh, period uh, four orbit and so on. So more uh, specifically for each of those P's, there will be GP is a space of, is a set of domains with the uh, with the uh, uh, CR boundary such that there is a P caustic. Okay, um, and uh, I, I want to form uh, these pictures, and uh, uh, while I am deforming the domain and I will be deforming uh, the circle, or you could deform an ellipse. I want to deform the domain, but I want to keep the family of periodic orbits. And I will start by deforming first this uh, circle and keeping the family of periodic orbits of period two. And in this case, it's a very old classical result. 
And after that, I will be telling you what happens if I start deforming the circle, but I'm keeping CAP periodic orbits of period three or periodic orbits of period four, or in a very naive terms, I will be trying to see if it is possible to intersect D2 uh, uh, and D3. Uh, and I will be trying to understand whether there is a non-trivial intersection. Okay, so let me start with this uh, classical topic. Uh, I don't know, uh, for me, the most illuminating uh, description is the following. You have a carriage and the carriage has one wheel, which is a circular and another wheel, which is of a strange shape, but you want it, uh, you want, uh, as it lies on the ground, if you put the ball on top of them, then you could roll them and the distance between the ground and the, uh, the platform on which it stands stays constant. And yes, it is possible. So you could roll uh, the circle and the width, which stay constant, but you could also roll something which is called uh, uh, Rayleau triangle. Uh, uh, so in terms of uh, uh, carriage, you just keep uh, the width the same. In terms of the billiard, uh, there is a periodic orbit of period two uh, in each direction. And the, uh, the length of those periodic orbits of period two uh, uh, is constant. So uh, certainly Rayleau is a, is a nice exercise in geometry for high school kids, but we want uh, uh, the will to have a smooth boundary. And, uh, um, and uh, let me just formally give a definition of a curve of a constant width. The curve has a constant width if I'm trying to touch it with uh, two planes uh, at the bottom and at the top, and the distance between these two planes stays constant independently in which direction I touch them. And I hope you see that uh, uh, there is, uh, the presence of periodic orbits of period two, uh, because uh, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, can be reformulated as period two orbit. So, uh, what is D2 or what is the set of domains with, uh, uh, which have constant width or which have uh, two caustic? So uh, let me just uh, give uh, an answer. So first, uh, there, is a, uh, there are many different uh, ways of uh, 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 defining this uh, uh, domain of a constant width. Uh, the most important for me is that it has two rational caustic, or the most important to me is that D2 is also a space of domains of constant widths. And how to describe this, uh, 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 this space? So it turns out that there is a very good coordinate system in which you could uh, describe it. And for this, I need a so-called support function. So, uh, so what do I do? Uh, I uh, consider my domain and I fix a point inside. And that's what I'm doing. I, I keep looking at the lines of my domain. Uh, and when, for every line which is tangent to my domain, I measure the angle with the horizontals and I measure the distance to, to, and I measure the distance to the corresponding uh, line. So I measure the distance of a blue line for a, a, a blue angle. Then I keep rotating the distance may be changing. And I, for example, here I look at the distance to the light green line. And uh, this is approximately three part over four. So supporting function, it's a function which, uh, which uh, tell us in which direction, uh, 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 what is the distance to the supporting line. Uh, and uh, uh, you could also, I mean, uh, I personally like the picture is that there is an oscillating triangle. So I look at the uh, point of a tangency. I look at the, uh, at the perpendicular segment and I look at this uh, segment. And when I uh, rotate the line, 
then the corresponding triangle uh, uh, moves. Uh, so um, why I'm bringing up uh, supporting functions? So uh, supporting functions have a very nice formulas for the circle, and they also have very nice uh, uh, expression uh, uh, for the ellipse. But as you will see in a second, they also give a very nice description to the to this subspace. So it turns out that in the space of supporting functions, and for each domain, you could create a, a, a supporting function. It turns out that the, uh, a, a, with the supporting function coordinate system, this becomes just a subspace. Uh, here's a, this uh, little calculation. So you look at the distance to a supporting line in the direction of phi. You look at the distance uh, uh, to a supporting line in the oh, di di diapodal uh, direction phi plus pi. And if you, uh, uh, if you uh, look when this sum is constant, then in this case of, uh, in the case of, uh, 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 Fourier coefficients of supporting function, you get this condition. And one of the, uh, it's naive observation, we, we cannot make it rigorous. Uh, this is approximately half of the dimension of the whole space. So the space of the domains of constant width is a subspace. And actually it simplifies the analysis. I, I don't know if I'll have time to talk about it, but in a, in a good coordinate system, uh, it's a, so if I have a supporting function P, then uh, the curve of a constant width is a, uh, uh, is a subspace defined by having zero uh, even Fourier coefficients. Uh, okay, so with this coordinate system, we escaped almost uh, 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 with uh, no price. So we know what is the space of domains which have a family of periodic orbits of period two. Uh, but what I want to do, I want to intersect with the uh, domains which have a family of period three periodic orbits. And let me do, draw a baby picture. So if I have a circle, then if you, uh, due to rotational symmetry, perimeter of a, a pink triangle and perimeter of a green triangle is the same. Moreover, it's quite easy to prove that for all triangles, which are in this picture, the perimeters stay constant. And now let me form my domain. And I really want you to think in terms of the space of perturbations. And I am deforming my domain in the space of perturbations. And I'm doing uh, uh, one of the most naive thing is uh, I'm perturbing with a third Fourier harmonic. And when I'm perturbing with a uh, uh, third Fourier harmonic, remember these are supporting functions. So uh, it's not literally that I change the, the radial distance, but if you think and uh, look at it, for example, in the direction pi over two, uh, my perturbation pushes out horizontally because, uh, and then uh, my perturbation also, um, sorry, it's not wrong here, but uh, my perturbation also pushes out here and pushes out there. So the point is that the, uh, the light green triangle got longer under the perturbation and the pink triangle got shorter. So if you kind of uh, look at this picture for a little bit, you see that when I do this deformation, then on the left picture, perimeters of all the triangles is constant. On the right picture, uh, the, uh, the triangle is destroyed. Uh, and uh, what it gives you an idea is that when you are perturbing with a third harmonic, uh, namely if your uh, support function has a third harmonic, then you are actually destroying this uh, three caustic. Uh, and actually, if you look at it, uh, 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 a little uh, deeper than what you see is that uh, whether it's a third caustic, or is a third harmonic or six harmonic on the ninth harmonic, it doesn't matter. And in the, in the more formal 
way to say it is that it, turn, it turns out that if I'm perturbing with uh, harmonics which are divisible by three, then I'm destroying the caustic. And if I, uh, uh, three caustic, and if I'm perturbing in the uh, orso uh, orthogonal direction, then I have a hope of, uh, of perturbing it. So uh, now what, let me do the following. Let me decompose uh, the space of perturbations into subspaces. Uh, and uh, uh, let me try to describe the picture. So um, th this is the space of all uh, domains. So this is my DR or CR in the language of supporting functions. Then there is a resonance of space. Uh, namely, these are Fourier harmonics divisible by three. And there is a non-resonance of space. And these are Fourier harmonics not divisible by three. And then, uh, uh, oh, let me switch the water. This is non-resonant. And that is a resonant. So uh, the, uh, the picture which, uh, uh, which on a heuristic level should be true is that this is my D3. And uh, uh, on a heuristic level, it seems that D3 should be first uh, tangent to the space of resonant harmonics. And uh, let me uh, leave a definition here. So what does it mean? Resonant. It means that uh, my Fourier coefficients, which are divisible by Q, is equal to zero. And uh, um, and what we managed to prove, we managed to prove that if you uh, look at the map of uh, uh, resonant harmonics into uh, the whole space of supporting functions. Then you can have uh, you can have uh, 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 the Q caustics, and uh, it's a form of a result of Baryshnikov of Zharnitsky. What we had difficulties proving that it's actually a graph. Uh, a graph means uh, that they could uh, represent this D3 uh, as a graph on the over the space of resonant harmonics, and. Uh, I mean, we, we saw that maybe we are experiencing some uh, technical difficulties. Uh, and uh, at the moment, we don't know how to prove it. But actually, um, um, here's the kind of the one of two, uh, uh, one of three central questions of the talk. So what we are interested in, we are interested in studying intersections or for example, domains which have two caustics and domains which have three caustics. We are also interested uh, in the intersections of domains which have say three caustics and the five caustics. And we are interested to see when this happens. And we are only interested in the local picture in the neighborhood of the circle. So these are the uh, questions by Sergei Tabachnikov. And let me give you the first answer. Uh, so the first answer is that this picture is correct. So what does it mean that this picture is correct? It means that the intersection of domains which have three caustics and the domains which have two caustic consist of a single point. And this actually seems really weird. So let me try to express why it seems weird. Uh, I showed you what, uh, what is the space of domains which have constant widths. The space of domains which have constant widths is a subspace of roughly half of the dimension. I want uh, the even Fourier harmonics to vanish and the odd harmonics are actually free. So it seems that half of the dimension of the uh, space of domains uh, uh, should have uh, two caustic, but look at the definition for Q equal to three. For definition for Q equal to three, it seems that those which have three caustics should have two thirds of the dimension because I insist only every third harmonic to be equal to zero. So it's a third harmonic, which is zero, six harmonic, which is zero, ninth harmonic, which is zero and so on. 
And it looks like there should be an intersection because if I'm giving you a nine dimensional space, uh, sorry, if I give you say six dimensional space, then this will be three and this will be four. So three plus four is seven and it's bigger than one. But uh, for some mysterious reasons, they do not intersect. I mean, once you start doing the proof, you understand why they do not intersect. But uh, I'm, the moment I'm not sure that this is a technical problem that the space of domains with a three caustic uh, is a graph or not. Anyway, without technical details, if you want to have a domain close to the circle, which has a two caustic and a three caustic, it means it is a circle. And it seems to be a quite a remarkable rigidity because what I'm telling you, I'm telling you that if I insist that the billiard map keeps a curve of rotation number one half and a curve of rotation number one third, which is in the language of twist maps, seems uh, uh, ridiculous. You have uh, 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 infinite, uh, you have infinite dimensional manifolds of twist maps like this. If you keep this and you keep that, it means it's a, it's a circle. Okay. Um, uh, now, uh, uh, let me just uh, uh, express uh, this, uh, uh, um, I mean, analytic fact. I, I, I do not claim it is a proof. I, I, the intersecting objects in uh, infinite dimensions uh, uh, is tricky and uh, uh, you need to be very careful. Still, uh, heuristically, uh, 50% of your dimensions is here, 66% of the dimensions in the, those which have uh, three caustic. Okay, and let me just uh, try to show it uh, heuristically, those which have uh, even coefficients, uh, uh, those which have free, uh, those which have non-zero even coefficients are here, those uh, which have uh, uh, coefficients for your coefficients uh, divisible by three is here, and still you have a chunk of the size of one over six. <sighs> when we did two and three caustics, uh, on one side it was exciting, but on the other side there is a tremendous simplification. And the tremendous simplification that this is a subspace. So intersecting a subspace with a manifold is one complexity problem by intersecting two manifolds is actually a totally different complexity problem. So we looked at uh, uh, um, the, the, say, the same, the same actually is true uh, when you, uh, you could replace three with two Q plus one. So for two and five, for two and seven and two and uh, nine, uh, the same result is true. Let me go to uh, the next result, which I actually found quite surprising, maybe as surprising as uh, as uh, 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 as as uh, result. So, uh, what we try to do, we try to intersect uh, uh, the space of domains with uh, uh, with the three caustic, and the space of domains which has five caustic. Um, and uh, we manage even to do uh, uh, perturbation theory up to order three. So uh, it turns out, yes, there exists an intersection. And, uh, but unfortunately we could not uh, make the method converge. So you could think that there is a, uh, this uh, five dimensional caustic is a kind of a curve. Uh, is a surface. And then there is a, somewhere here, there are many different families uh, which intersect uh, three and five. I mean, my graph graphical abilities are uh, bounded, uh, but uh, uh, the, uh, the green and red, they actually do intersect. And for example, they intersect if you intersect with the 17th harmonic. Uh, uh, so there are, there are some non-trivial deformations 
uh, which uh, serve three and five caustics, thrill, the situation is incredibly uh, rigid in the sense that it's a very, very hard to find a family which will preserve uh, three and five caustic. But let me uh, try uh, to explain this picture. So if I'm perturbing by a distance epsilon, then the mismatch between uh, one manifold and another manifold is just uh, an epsilon uh, to the third. How much time is left? Four minutes. Okay, so let me just uh, tell you words uh, about the proof. So um, uh, we, the first uh, big tool is to write down a functional equation. So we want to write down a functional equation in terms of supporting functions, uh, which describes a manifold of having a three caustic. Uh, and we are trying to write down in this case, it's not necessary, but let me still write, say that uh, uh, it, this one is trivial, but we, we want to write down a functional equation which preserves a two caustic. And uh, this is just the language in which you could uh, explain it. So in order to write down those functional equations, you need generating functions, you need the so-called Lagrange equation in terms of those generating functions. And uh, uh, then uh, 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 an iteration, potential iteration scheme starts. And originally we have in mind uh, approach uh, of Levy uh, and Moser for this problem. So basically you do the first order perturbation theory in terms of a generating function. And then uh, what is quite sophisticated, you need to find parameterization of the corresponding caustic. And if you manage to solve that this equation is equal to zero up to epsilon square corrections, then you are hoping to iterate. So basically the, the, potential, the potential proof of coexistence of three and five caustics on non-trivial families uh, relies in the fact that this uh, procedure should converge. And actually formulas get uh, more than one page long uh, for uh, even at the second step. And this is where uh, Edmund uh, Korsdinand really made a technical breakthrough. But uh, the, the, the whole structure is to try to solve the two functional equations can be solved simultaneously. In the case of two and three, we showed uh, actually at the order epsilon squares that you cannot solve them simultaneously. That's why two and three uh, do not coexist. And when we try to solve that, uh, uh, F3 and F5 not be solved simultaneously in a uh, fairly large convolution term. Uh, it was possible to spot uh, uh, that there are some degenerate directions. So uh, the proof of these results is you are uh, writing down functional equations and then you are trying to solve it. And, uh, but the whole message to the audience periods are much, much more rigid than the twist maps and non-existence of two and three, uh, 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 non-coexistence of two and three is uh, one example. And here there is just uh, uh, several families which are not ellipses for which three and five can coexist. And it's also a reflection of a super rigidity. So maybe I'll stop here. One fourth and what? I mean, uh, the problem of resonance uh, comes out right away. Uh, well, we we need to look at the quadratic term, and it's no fun. I mean, uh, I guess uh, we just need to look at the epsilon square term of the perturbation theory and look at it. My bet is that they cannot coexist. Uh, but but roughly speaking, you look at the square term, you see that you cannot you cannot satisfy it, and you see this is just a subspace.
amazingly, three and five exist up to the third pair. 17, one, seven, seven. Huh? Support function. In the language of support function, this is a family which is a quadratic term. It was very surprising. It's like three lines long, but you hit this one and it disappears. I, I mean, 17 is relatively prime with respect to five, and uh, the remainder with respect to three is minus one, and the remainder with respect to five is plus two, and then you put this, uh, but uh, this is the one. There are others. There are very few, but there are others. Um, so how to say it, uh, you have a splitting of the, uh, phase space and, uh, it's easier to solve the first order equation, but <laughs> it does not mean that it's easier to solve a second order equation. So you, you do expansion with respect to epsilon. And as uh, Q increases, uh, this uh, hours and epsilon. Uh, okay, there is, there is a result, uh, Kiazan, which says that domains having rational caustics are dense in the space of domains, but it surprises that you need to let Q go to infinity. So, yes, when Q goes to infinity is a good limit. There are many domains with uh, rational caustics, but we want to solve two equations simultaneously. And we cannot say, okay, we solved uh, uh, the first order approximation theory and then later it, it will work. It, we actually need to solve that they are solvable simultaneously. Uh, and even though there is more space, but the formulas do get longer. I mean, you just stick it into this scheme. I do suspect that the formulas get become different. And for example, for two and three, this is a very natural question. You look at the quadratic term of this scheme and you try to see whether uh, the same phenomenon. Basically for quadratic, term, this case is just a positive definite form. I, I don't know why I have no explanation, but since it's positive definite, then if you want it to be zero, then it means uh, it's perturbation is zero. But uh, yeah, I mean, just to, uh, yeah, three and four is totally different story. You need to intersect two manifolds. Yeah. 